everyone. Welcome to another lunchtime with live animals. I'm Forrest. Here in the background is Crystal, our invertebrate care specialist. I manage the uh, live invertebrate program. And we're here today with another uh, group of insects, some of our favorites. This is this is Twiggy, and Twiggy's best friend is Jimbo over here. And these are some of the largest walking sticks uh, that are from Australia. They're called Australian walking stick. Twiggy is a female here. We'll talk more about uh, her in a minute and Bo's a male. And so walking sticks are called walking sticks because they look like walking sticks. They look like parts of plants uh, because they're herbivores and herbivore means to eat plants. And so they look like what they eat in order for protection. Uh, Twiggy here looks like she's just covered in spines all over her. Her body, her shell, her exoskeleton looks like she's covered in thorns, just like the plant that she's on. This is called pyracantha. It's extremely thorny, has these huge, massive thorns. And so that's one way that they uh, have adapted one of their survival adaptations to protect themselves is to camouflage in <clears throat> and to even go so far as to look like uh, the defense of plants, the thorns of plants, uh, which is incredible, besides just looking uh, like they're blending in. I also have here another huge walking stick. This is from our collection. This is called <laughs> a spiny walking stick. Can you see why? Can you see these huge leg spines on his leg? And so what this species does is he'll stand on his head and go into a handstand like this upside down and then throw his legs open and try to uh, catch whatever's messing with him on these thorns as, as defense. And it's pretty wicked. These are incredibly strong thorns. And so it's not thorns that they went and glued to their body, right? It's part of their exoskeleton. It's genetically programmed in um, their bodies have these uh, as part of their anatomy. And so if we look closer at what's going on, you can also see the antenna. Here's one antenna here, the other one's pointing the other direction so you can not see it. And so one of the main ways that they sense what's going on in the world is with these antennae. And they're really like feelers. They can't see very well. And so to figure out which direction they're gonna climb and move their legs, they use these long antenna like, uh, like a walking cane, if you will. And what's interesting, all right, Jimbo's on the move. Crystal's here for support. Jimbo takes off. Jimbo has wings. Uh, the females don't have wings, but they just have little teeny tiny wings. The males have full grown wings. And they can definitely fly. You can see his wings hanging down there. He might, might take flight here in a minute as part of his defense mechanism against me. <laughs> uh, but they have antenna that are really well developed because they can't see very well. And what's interesting is, is if they lose one of their antenna, they can regenerate it and grow it back. But they'll grow it back as a leg. So then they'll get more legs if they lose an antenna. So this is an up close shot of, of Twiggy's head. You can see all the amazing thorns that come off of her head to protect her from things that have a soft palate, especially like a bird where the inside of their mouth is soft. They don't want to crunch down on something that's thorny like this. That'd be terrible or a frog or a lizard. And then this is some of the really long antenna here. They're thrown forward like their legs are thrown forward and I'll help them uh, in their locomotion. Get to the next picture I can show you. All right, could you get me the picture of the regenerated uh, antenna. So if they lose a bit of antenna in their next molt, they'll grow out another little portion and it'll keep growing. It'll become like a little leg up front. Thank you, Crystal. So here's an X-ray of an antenna. This part has been severed and then you can see the regrowth here down in the bottom as they're getting longer and longer. And there's even a little claw, like a foot claw that's formed on the end. So that's an amazing uh, adaptation. Let's look at some of the babies that we have here. So another form of defense that they have 
is they'll hang upside down and to even camouflage further, they'll sway their bodies back and forth like they're swaying in the breeze, right? Because when you're living in the plants, the plants aren't holding still. There's always wind movement. And so they'll sway back and forth. There it goes. See it doing a little jig? We'd probably call that dancing. Maybe they think they're dancing too, but it's more of a sway back and forth. So this is uh, the larval stage, also called the subadult. So this is just the baby. This one's gonna grow larger and larger and larger and become like this large female here. They can live for about a year. They have incomplete metamorphosis. You just saw it curl its, its tail over its abdomen. Now it's trying to resemble a scorpion, right? Because scorpions are venomous. This one's not venomous, but why not do that if you can, right? And uh, get some protection that way. And we had some emerge today from their eggs. So we have some teeny tiny versions here. Let me see if I can get this in focus, right? And when they're teeny tiny, they just look like little ants. So here's a little one here reaching for some food. Let's see if we can get it onto a branch. There we go. I don't know if you can see that, but it just climbed up into that branch there. I think it's not in view for y'all. <clears throat> so their eggs are pretty big. Um, this is some of their eggs. This is another one that hatched out. You can see it looks like an ant, redheaded ant. <laughs> um, and a lot of things don't like to eat ants because they have an acid, a uh, vinegar-like acid inside of their bodies that protects them. So very few things eat ants, except for like ant eaters um, and a few other things. What's interesting is that most females are parthenogenic. What's that mean? What that means is that they can produce clones of themselves, like a bee produces a whole bunch of, uh, of sister bees, a queen bee does. Males are very rare in nature. So we're lucky to have this uh, this mel. You still have the mel crystal to take off? He's right there. All right, there he is. We still have the mel. He's not flying around the lab, thank God. Uh, another version that we have here, these are really slim gems here. This is the Vietnamese walking stick. Um, not full grown right now. These are still just sub adults. You see how stick like their body is, right? It's incredible. And we have a few more that are a little bit larger than that. Camouflaged over here. If you still can handle this for me. Thank you very much. So this one's a little bit limp. She really has her antenna thrown over the edge of that, this leaf here. She is, has just molted. I mean, she's uh, outgrown her old exoskeleton, has shed it, grown a little bit larger uh, with the new exoskeleton. What's interesting is that um, these Australian walking sticks that we've known about for a while but a new species was discovered recently. Only four of them have ever been seen. And they gave them the funny name uh, Lady Gargantuan because they're absolutely huge. They're almost two feet long. And the reason uh, people haven't been able to spy on them very much and very much or very little is known about them because they live way up high in the canopy where people almost never go. Uh, another one that we usually have, but we don't have today, is the walking leaf. And the walking leaves, talk about looking exactly like a leaf, are incredible. So this is the insect right here. Sorry. Here's another walking leaf. And so you have portions of their body that look like uh, there's been chew on it. Though it's not chew, it's just an adaptation. It's just a, a variation in coloring that their body has evolved uh, to make because they get some sort of benefit from it, some sort of uh, 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 help by looking like a dead leaf. You can see the, vena the venation or the veins in the leaf as well, even though, right, it's not functional except for camouflage. So these guys are sitting here chewing. Um, we don't have to offer them any food. 
because they live on their food. They're nocturnal, so they're mostly active at night. And they'll go around really munching at night during the day. They don't do much, but try to um, not be detected. There's a little guy right there hanging out for his first day. Just emerged from the egg just this morning. It's so amazing. All right, everyone. Thank you for joining me. We appreciate it. <clears throat> you can find us on Instagram for more information about uh, our live, live animal program and all the things that we're doing here at the museum. Thank you so much. See you next time. Thank you.